protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Welcome back. Today we see massive fighting in the Philippines. Martial law has been declared. And the question is, will the Philippines become the next Syria? We see in this Muslim-controlled area, and of course we look at Mindanao, as you see the map behind me, Mindanao is the southern portion of the Philippines. It has been predominantly Muslim for a very long time. As a matter of fact, it had a large Muslim presence there since the 1300s, but that has recently exploded. And of course, in the 1980s, they were created as an autonomous region, the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao. That was created in 1981. Prior to that, they had had a movement, the uh, Moro Muslims and the Moro National Liberation Front, for all those of you who say that uh, Barack Obama can't be a Muslim and a communist, well, just take a look at this. But uh, they were fighting, and to try to stop that, Fernand, Ferdinand Marcos offered a plebiscite in the 1970s that was voted down. They did another one in, the in 1981. Only four areas wanted separation. But then they expanded that again in 2000, and the Muslim population has blossomed, I guess we could say. Now what we see happening is a massive attack in a couple of towns. A police chief has been beheaded by militants. They have taken over some of the towns, and they have been rebuffed, uh, the Philippine military, as they're trying to take that town back. Militants allied to ISIS have rampaged the southern Philippine town, beheading a local police chief, kidnapping a priest, 10 parishioners, as more firefights broke out and buildings were set ablaze on Thursday. As a matter of fact, they've also have had the ISIS flag flying from the hospital. The violence erupted on Tuesday in Marawi has left at least 21 dead, 13 militants uh, were dead, and dozens wounded. President Duterte has declared martial law on the island of Mindanao, and of course he was in Russia speaking to Putin because he is. Uh, there's been a lot of tensions between Duterte and the U.S., especially under the Obama administration. And so he's making moves to other leaders. He had to cut that trip short and come back to the Philippines. The, Phil the militants have threatened to kill the priest and other hostages that they captured while they were saying prayers. Uh, they stormed into St. Mary's Cathedral in the town, and they have taken them as human shields. Witnesses reported loud explosions in the town Thursday as several military helicopters hovered overhead. Philippine President Duterte threatened to impose nationwide martial law to combat the rising threat of terrorism. And he said the, the beheaded police chief was on his way home and militants stopped him at a checkpoint. This is, uh, Mindanao makes up about a third of the country home to about 20 million people. And he said that this is going to be harsh. As he came home from Russia, uh, he said, as he held a press conference, if I think you should die, you will die. If you fight us, you will die. If there's an open defiance, you will die. And if it means many people dying, so be it. As he spoke in Manila, members of the military gathered on the outskirts of Marari, reports uh, NPR. They said the military had aimed to quickly capture an individual, Hapalon, a senior leader of Abu Sayyaf, only to be surprised Tuesday by an influx of 100 jihadi fighters who backed him. Between that botched operation and Duterte's speech, Abu Sayyaf militants and their allies in the Mate group raised the black flags of ISIS above some public buildings, as I pointed out. The hospital is one of them, many others as well. They burned other buildings. They killed at least three members of the security forces. Uh, the police officer was beheaded, so forth. They have blocked off the town. Now, this comes on the same day that we have had a leaked transcript. Another leak. Imagine this. Another leak from people who are eavesdropping on Donald Trump. Wouldn't be John Brennan's friends that are left behind or James Clapper's friends who are left behind or James Comey's friends who are left behind. Nevertheless, another leaked transcript where he was talking to Duterte. And in this, a lot of people are very upset about it. Uh, CNN, say, he said, I just wanted to congratulate you because I'm hearing of the unbelievable job you're doing on the drug program. Many countries have this problem, he said. We have a problem. But what a great job you're doing. I just wanted to call and tell you that. Well, why would that get anybody upset? Well, it's getting people upset because in this campaign, they estimate that perhaps uh, more than 7,000 Filipinos have been killed. So when Donald Trump says it's an unbelievable job... What they're doing is extrajudicial executions by the police. He has encouraged, according to Human Rights Watch, he has encouraged the police to shoot first and maybe never ask questions. This is something that's been going on for quite some time. But part of this back and forth that we have seen with President Trump 
and President Duterte, I think, is involved in the politics of this. Because Duterte, as uh, he was angry with uh, Barack Obama, had uh, said that he was going to, uh, he thought he was going to be uh, assassinated by the CIA. He also called about six or nine months ago for all U.S. forces to leave within two years. So this is a kind of pushback we've not seen before. And as we look at this, we understand that this is something that's not the first time we've had an attack in the Philippines. About nine months ago, ISIS-backed uh, rebels attacked a jail and uh, 20 heavily armed fighters attacked a jail and they released uh, one of their, some eight of their fellow militants and 15 other inmates. So that was about nine months ago. But as we look at this war on drugs that he is doing, it is a situation where basically he is rounding up people who are si simply suspected drug personalities. 2,717 suspected drug personalities were killed, and this is a total that was put out by Reason Magazine as of May the 1st, but that doesn't count other people who have been killed since then or other types of slayings. According to PMP numbers, another 3,271 people had died in extrajudicial, vigilante-style, unexplained killings. Now, this is coming from Human Rights Watch. Meanwhile, as he was in Russia, Vladimir Putin is vowing to help the Philippines because he's trying to move and triangulate in, and if they would throw out the U.S., Russia would love to move into that power vacuum. He says, we will help you fight drugs. We will help you fight terrorism, something that they desperately need, both of those. And as I pointed out, back in October, uh, Duterte said that he was going to uh, throw out uh, remove U.S. troops, and he said, maybe the CIA will try to assassinate me. He said, you want to oust me? You want to use the CIA? Go ahead. I'm not going to stop. So these kinds of uh, angry exchanges between Duterte and the U.S. have been going on beginning in the Obama administration. There's been a couple of calls that have outraged people where Donald Trump has tried to tamp things down. But understand that as he was in Russia, he had just given an interview with RT, Duterte, and he, said he had some very sharp criticism in the United States. He suggested that the U.S., particularly the CIA, is seeking to destabilize his administration. And then immediately this attack happens. Biggest attack that they've had yet. He asserted that he has a friendly relationship with President Trump. But then he added that the Congress, the State Department, and other arms of the U.S. political establishment are not in accord with Trump. Obviously, we see that, don't we? The same people who are leaking the memos between Duterte and Trump, where Trump is trying to calm this down. Those same people are the ones who are trying to overthrow Donald Trump. So they are also perhaps trying to overthrow Duterte. And so, as he says, we're fighting terrorism like any other country. We need arms. And suddenly, two senators of the U.S. Congress said they will not proceed with the exportation of these arms. And I said, no problem. I can always go to China or I can go to Russia. And he said that while he was in Russia. Then he was called home because ISIS attacks. ISIS, the people who we were told just going against uh, President Assad. And so the question is, is this the same thing that we're seeing happening in Syria? RT also interviewed Patrick Henningsen, executive director of 21st Century Wire, and he made a very close correlation to this. He said, uh, in the end of the day, Duterte is in exactly the same situation, very similar to Assad in Syria, early on in the sort of terrorist takeover of that country in the early days of the FSA and then al-Nusra Front and then later ISIS. So Duterte has to balance out this public relations issue. Is he going to be too heavy-handed? Most people looking at Syria say, well, you can't be too heavy-handed when it comes to dealing with ISIS. He says if there was any criticism of Assad, especially from 2011 to 2012, but especially in the beginning of the crisis in Syria, the criticism from Syrians would have been he wasn't heavy-handed enough. Duterte is probably looking at that same situation in Syria and then taking a sort of a tougher attack because if it gets out of hand and he starts losing cities or towns or governance to terrorist control, then you really have a big problem on your hands. It's a very complicated area. The artificial islands that China has put in that area. Uh, he's also uh, having some harsh words with China, threatening each other back and forth over the Spratly Islands and that area where they've set up artificial islands to restrict trade to try to grab resources. A very complicated issue. Stay with us when we come back. We're going to talk about uh, Little Mogadishu.
our own little terraced area in Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota. As a matter of fact, we'll be right back. During this Memorial Day, I want to thank the veterans that have fought, but of course, most importantly, those that have died, because that's what this holiday and remembrance is all about. Take advantage of these unprecedented specials and help support the tip of the spear in the fight against the globalists while supplies last. These are the biggest sales ever on these items. You add auto ship, several of these are lost leaders. So for myself and the entire InfoWars crew, I salute you and thank you for all your prayers on this Memorial Day. Just understand that without you, there'd be nothing because you are the InfoWar.